got your Bibles, let's turn over to the book of Mark. Let's turn over to the book of Mark, and uh, we're going to be in chapter 5. Because we're all going through something. Because we're all going through something. I, uh, I tell you what, in my Christian walk, probably the thing more than anything else that, I, that I've come across is the part of life where everybody has challenges. And, and Mark chapter 5 is, is without a doubt one of my, my favorite chapters in the Bible because it, it really talks about the control that Jesus has over, over everything. And it, it is a special place in the Bible. The miracles that are mentioned here are mentioned in other books in the Bible, but the three of these are put together, and I just want to specifically talk about one, and I want to read one verse this morning. I want to talk about this specifically, this one, where in this lady's mind that she just had in her mind that if I could just get to Jesus. And, I, you know, and, and as I read and studied that this week, I thought to myself more than anything else, how, how true can that be? How many times in my life, you know, how many times in my life, Brother Tommy, if, if I could just, if I could just get to Jesus, you know what I'm saying? If I could just get there, how, how true would that be? But the Bible tells us in Mark 5 and, and 28, I want to read this one verse, and the Bible says, For she said, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. That's pretty powerful right there, isn't it? If I shall but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, to God, Lord, we're just so grateful. We're so thankful for all the many wonderful things that you're doing for us, God. God, for, for what this day represents. And dear God, Lord, as, as young Walt has come and he's going to get ready to, to go down a path to Jesus, dear God, Lord, and he's, he's falling through in obedience today. God, I'm thankful for that young man and his family, dear God, who are here to support him. Dear Jesus, dear God, Lord, we're just grateful for that. But dear God, Lord, in this moment in time, Lord, I just pray, dear God, Lord, that you'd open up our hearts, our souls, and our minds. Dear God, to, to get an understanding of your word. Lord, just be with us in this moment in time. Help us to see the things that you'd have us to see. Lead us, guide us, and direct us. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. You know, sometimes when we go through the Bible, we don't see things that are new. We see things that we don't pay attention to, though. And I think that that is probably on my journey through the, the Bible a lot of times, that there are a lot of times that God would show me something, and, and maybe on my journey through reading this several more times that I see something. And God allowed me to see something this week that I had not seen before, and, and, I, and I found that very interesting. And this morning I want to I focus and, and look at that. But before we, before we get to that, I want to talk about this lady's situation. I do want to talk about her lady's, this lady's situation and what she was enduring. So the Bible tells us, that a lady, that this lady, a certain woman, which had an issue of blood for 12 years. How many of you have, have been sick for a minute? I'm talking about like sick for a minute. I watch my, I'm, when, I, when I talk about a sickness, I talk about, I, I want to use the, I want to use the cancers of today, if that's okay. I want to use those type of sicknesses because those of, those of you in the room that have endured something like that, that have had to go through that, and I will use, a, uh, I use my mom, I've watched her, you know, that's been, Several years we've watched her go through things, okay? So, and, and if you've ever been around someone who has a disease, and it could be Alzheimer's, you can, you, we can list all of those diseases. Sometimes, as a family member, it can be very frustrating. What's even more frustrating, Sister Jeanette, is, is as time goes on, it, it is, it almost, you almost become helpless. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you watch a person suffer. How many in your life, I'm just going to say it this way, have watched somebody suffer? In their life just watch somebody suffer and, and do you feel like Marchy sometimes that suffering's needless you know what I'm saying like man why are they having to go through that you know it's, it's, and there's people that are sitting in this room that are suffering for some things you know and it's and we 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 kind of have to go through them you know and I, I'd love to tell you that some that, you know at the end of the day there's a check mark there's a mirror but unfortunately in the world that we live in in the simple world there's a lot of sicknesses that we're going to go through you know this this past year we've we watched a sickness, and, and several weeks ago, I, I listed out a lot of other sicknesses that are out there, from heart disease to cancer to different things to diabetes. And, and there are people that have to suffer through these things. And the Bible grabs a hold of this special story and, and talks about this lady. And I, one of the things that, that even in writing that Mark wrote about, he talked about the length of time. You know, I, I've been sick. Who's ever had the common cold? You know what I'm saying? Come on, most of us in the room have. You may tell you the greatest thing about the common cold. Y'all want to tell you what, what's neat about the common cold? 
is that there's all over the counter stuff that they'll sell you for that. And you can take every, uh, listen, listen to this. You can do absolutely nothing, and in two and a half to three weeks, it'll be gone. And you can take every bit of those medicines, and in two and a half to three weeks, it'll be gone. Is that, is that true, or am I right or wrong? That's the truth. I mean, in two or three weeks, it'll be gone. No matter what you do, it's, you're stuck with it. But think about being stuck with something that you can't get rid of. You know what I'm saying? There, there's no cure for it. And, and, and the frustrating process of that, the, the frustrating process of, of having to live that every day of your life, knowing there's a good chance, listen to this, knowing that there's a good chance that what you have is probably going to kill you. And you just don't know when that day's coming. That's a, that's a tough, you know, you can listen to Preacher Joey get excited about living, and you can go listen to all these people that want to lift you up, but at the end of the day, it's a tough road to walk, is it not? But I'm going to tell you something. This lady was talk, walking a tough road, Steve. She was. She had something. She had endured it for a long time. Now, the Bible tells us that the lady had went to all kinds of places to get help. Isn't it isn't kind of cool, the world we live in? How many of you have ever had something where when you went to the doctor, they didn't give you the answer that you wanted? <laughs> Anybody in the room besides me? Like, they didn't tell you what you wanted to hear, so what did you do? You went to another doctor. You know, I, I, I'm being honest. You, you said, that, that doctor, I'll be honest with you, he didn't tell me what I wanted to hear, so I'm going to go to a different doctor. Hey, there are a lot of Christians that do that with preachers today. <laughs> they do, Dennis. They come to a church, and they, the preacher that they're listening to doesn't tell them what they want to hear. So, like, you know what? You know, and he may identify sin. He may identify causes in their life. He may identify root causes, as I have been quoted to be saying, Brother Joey may have stepped on my toes. And you know what happens? Sometimes they just say, Jimmy, I don't want to hear that. I'm going to go listen to somebody that will tell me what I want to hear, okay? So sometimes y'all understand the fact that maybe a doctor may tell us something we don't want to hear. Guy, for me and you in your case, we may go to the doctor, and, and Brother Lee's in here with me somewhere in the room. I know Lee's in here. He don't mind me saying it. But if he were to go to the doctor, the doc, one of the things that the doctor would probably identify in our lives, he would say, what, Lee? What would he tell us to do? <laughs> he said you are the perfect circle <laughs> he said you're the perfect circle but he would probably tell us something we didn't want to hear to correct our issue and we have an issue that probably could be corrected he'd probably say and it's it's a there's some, some four little words that get said but this isn't five but he would you probably use that word diet you know we got to change our diet, start eating things that we don't want. But, but, you know, some of us have things in the room, and I want to say that because there are things that we can do to correct those things. We may choose not to. We may not want to correct them. But we, we, we tell people, and people tell us things that maybe we just don't want to hear, Sam. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to hear. And I, and I, and I believe that. I, I believe that about church. A lot of times we come in here, and we hear corrective issues. We don't want to hear the corrective issues, but they're out there on the table. But the Bible says that this lady, in her frustration, had went to a lot of physicians. Now, but the Bible didn't say that they were giving her corrective actions. It said that she had went to a lot of physicians, and none of them could help her. Now, see, that, that'd be kind of frustrating. Now, I go to this guy, and he, you know, man, I, I look at what you got. You got something bad going on. And I go to this doctor, and I look at something bad. I hate what you got going on. I go to this doctor, and she goes to person after person after person. Can you see the frustration that that would be, though? You know, those doctors didn't live in today's world because today's doctors will take your money and tell you anything just to get you going down some path. You know what I'm saying? They will. They will. And I'm like, hey, listen, y'all, doctors are a good thing. I love the doctors and what they do, but they'll, they'll keep you going down a the path. They'll tell you. And, and you know what? And today's doctors can help us in a lot of ways. They really can. But the doctors of that time, could not figure out what was going on with this lady. So she had one frustration I want you to focus on. One frustration is she had this for a long time. Number two frustration is no matter where she went, Stephen, nobody could help her. You know what I'm saying? Wouldn't that be bad if no matter where I went, 
the problem that I wanted somebody to solve, nobody could help me. That would become frustrating. Problem number three exists, the Bible tells us. Problem number three existed when it says that she took all the money that she had and she had spent everything on trying to fix that. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you what. There's a lot of people in this room, a lot of attitudes about saving, a lot of attitudes about investing. A lot of, there are a lot of people that are in different places. There are people that are in great places in life, and they think they got it licked. You know, I've saved enough. <laughs> there are people in places that, man, I need to save more. There are people that they work on. But I, I want you to think about a position in life when you've taken everything that you have, everything that you possess. Listen, not, not that you wasted it, okay, Sam? Like, hey, you went and bought the sports car. Man, they, hey, they went and bought the Corvette. They went and bought the nice car. She went and bought a nice car. She wasted all her money. The Bible doesn't say she wasted on getting a nice house or going to the spa too often or she went on too many vacations. She literally spent all of her money and all of her resources trying to get better. You know, just trying to live one more day. You know, you know what I'm saying? You ever think about how living one more day is important? You know, I know that we're not promised tomorrow. But just to live one more day, Poppy, just to have one more chance, just to have one more, she took everything she had, everything she possessed, the Bible says, and she went and spent all of the money that she had just so she could try to figure out. So I want you to say that because it's frustrating. And let me tell you what the end of the story is for her in all of this. And the Bible says, and you may not grab the words out of this, but through all of that, 12 years, a lot of physicians, I spent all of my money, and you know what the Bible says the result of it was? It just got worse. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. That stinks. That absolutely stinks. There's no way around. There's a lot of people that are sitting in this room. Joey, I've suffered through this. I've watched people suffer. I get it. It stinks to know that you've taken, you've went down a path, you've, spent, you've had, for years you've been doing something. I'm going to tell you what, the doctors can't help me. I've spent all that I have, and I'm going to tell you something. To make matters worse, not only is it not getting better, not only, you know, it'd be kind of cool sometimes. Have you ever had a sickness that you could just stay the same? You know, you just kind of, kind of like, I've always said that's the hand I'm dealt. I'm just, going to, I'm just glad there's different people who have different burdens in life. And I look at mine sometimes, and I'm like, that's the one I got. I just pray, God, that it stays. Uh, I just, but her situation was it got worse. It got worse. Now, what's amazing to me, and knowing all that, I want you to put that together with me more because I want to read this verse. Because all of that evidence is given before she makes this statement. Now, y'all think about this. I want y'all to think about this. The Bible reads these other three verses in front of this, and it gives these other three verses in front of this. She had it for 12 years. She went to a lot of physicians. She spent all of her money, and it got worse. A hopeless situation. Have y'all ever been in a hopeless situation? Anybody in the room ever been in a hopeless situation? There's a couple of people been in a hopeless situation. I want to read the verse with y'all now. I'm going to back up. And I'm going to stand here beside Miss Wanda Wanda if you can, if you can. I'm going to read it up there on the screen. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Now I want to pause and think about this for a minute. How in the world did she get to that? Think about it, Sammy. How in the world did she get to that? How in the world did that lady who had went to see everybody that there was, had had something for 10 years, you know what? She'd spent all of her money, and what she had was she was getting worse. How did she make that statement? It's kind of funny, isn't it, Lawrence? You never thought about this, had you? She made the statement, but how did she get to that logic point? And I'm going to tell you there's only two ways that she could have. There's only two ways. So first, I'm going to say, there's one way, is it maybe by some self-indulgent and convincing herself that that is the case, that maybe she heard of Jesus. I don't, I really, the Bible doesn't comment on this, Sammy, so I know that. I don't believe this to be the case, but she convinced herself somehow, some way, that if I could just take, now, now she didn't say, if I could meet Jesus, if Jesus could put his hands on me, if Jesus could pray for me, if Jesus could lay. Like, you know, he did that with blind people. He did that with lame people. He did it with dead people. She said, she got to a place and said, if I could just touch his garment, 
And I question everybody in the room. How did she get to that logic? How did she get there? It's kind of a good thought, isn't it? I'm going to tell you something. Somebody had to convince her. Somebody had to convince her. She had to have a witness. That's exactly right, Brother William. She had to have somebody in her life that convinced her that Jesus was the answer to her problem. You think about what I'm saying. Somebody somewhere in that lady's life, somebody somewhere, some person, some aunt, some uncle, some nephew, some niece, some relative, some younger kid, I don't know who it was. Somebody convinced her. And listen to me, y'all. We can be convinced. And anybody, listen, I don't care where you stand, and I'm not going to even say the word, but I'm going to show you over the last year, you, convince, you can convince Americans to do anything. Y'all listen to what I'm saying. I'm not going to say the word. I'm not going to talk about what we went through. I'm going to talk about your belief standpoint on either side of that coin. You can convince people to do anything. You can. And I'm going to tell you something. It's amazing who we listen to in that convinced structure. But here this lady was. Here this lady was, Sammy. Still want to go back to it, y'all. Twelve years. Went to all the doctors. Don't forget all this. Spent all my money. My problems are getting worse. And now, all of a sudden, Becky, all of a sudden, her logic has completely changed. She's got somebody in her life. She's got somebody in her life that's telling her that Jesus is the answer. Y'all hear this? I want to say it a little louder, y'all. She's got somebody in her life that is explaining to her that Jesus is the answer. Amen. I'm going to stop for a second. The only way that I can convince people that Jesus is the answer. Y'all, please listen to me about what I'm about to say. Pete, don't lose this one. Is that I have to be convinced that he is. Amen. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Listen to me. The only way, Matt, that I can convince somebody that Jesus is the only way, listen to this now, is you first have to believe that Jesus is the only way. There are a lot of people, listen to this, that I as a minister am not convinced that you are convinced. I'm not. I'm not convinced. Hey, listen, y'all, let me tell y'all something. Don't, everybody's going to get mad at me. Gosh, the body knows I get mad at more than I know. But just think about what I was, I'm about to say. But if I wasn't convinced about it, I'd be playing golf on Sundays too. I'll be honest with y'all. If I wasn't convinced that Jesus was the answer, if I wasn't convinced that he was the way, if I wasn't convinced that God could change people's lives, if I wasn't convinced, Stephen, that God could do something, I wouldn't be here either. And every drop of the hat, if I got Braves tickets, I'd be gone too. If I could go play golf, if I could go fishing, if I go hunting, y'all, I'd be there with you. Because you know what? And the reason it cries that out, because you ain't convinced either. Because if you were convinced, if you were, and you say, Joey, that's judgmental. If you were convinced, you'd be doing your best to tell people just like that. You would be trying your best to convince somebody else that that's the only way. Think about what I'm saying. There are a lot of people in this church, listen to me, that are convinced. Let me say this to say this. There are a lot of people in this church that are convincing. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. They are convincing about what they believe. They, they, they would have you to believe that what they are doing is real. They would have you to believe that their faith is true. They would have you to believe that there is no other way. And I'm going to tell you something. You see it by every way that they walk. Don't get mad at me. We went through a pandemic. And the sweet lady 
was here a lot of Sundays when she should have stayed at home. She was. You want me to tell you why she was here? Do y'all want to know why? She is convinced, and I know that. She is convinced at what the Almighty can do. And that may make some of you mad. It may frustrate you, but you better think about what I'm saying. The reason that we cannot convince others, the reason that we cannot proclaim the Almighty, the reason that we cannot tell Jesus that he's the only way, because the honest good truth of it is, is we ain't convinced ourselves. That's the truth. We haven't convinced ourselves. Because if we had, <laughs> if we had, Brother Dennis, we would have a different walk. We would have a different mindset. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You talk about the people that are in heaven today and the, what they meant, and I know that some of y'all, you want to go meet Peter, and you want to go meet Paul, you want to go meet, I'm going to tell you something, folks, I want to meet people like that. I want to meet people that convinced that lady that, listen, had went 12 years, that had saw every doctor, you know what, that had spent all her money, that watched her life get worse, convinced them that Jesus was the only way. I want to go meet those people. I want to go with those people who had their heart in it. Y'all come to this church on Sunday. Y'all come into this building. Listen to me, y'all. Y'all wondering what we're doing here? Joey's not trying to get you to Jesus Christ. Most of you are in this room. Know Jesus as your Savior. I am trying to get you to get out of this room and go tell somebody else that he's the only way. Think about what I'm saying. I, you know, there's a lot of times you hear the messages that Joey's preaching. You say, man, is he trying to get, I'm saved. I'm good, Joey. I'm okay. I'm on the path that I need to be on. Listen to me, y'all. What we have got to do is get out of this building and convince them, Matt. You know, that's what uh, I watch. I watch the things that go on in this church and what it's trying to do. And whether it be hope for the hungry, whether it be the youth night, whether it be praying, whether it be Sunday school. You know what? All we're trying to do is to get a, and I, I don't want to use the word, a little different, I'm going to grab a little different word and use the word conviction <laughs> about what we believe. I'm talking about conviction about what we believe. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Some of us, Joey, I may never meet most of the people that you know in this room, your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues. I may never know them. And in and listen, I, I'll be honest with you. If Jessica called me tomorrow and said, Joey, I got a friend down here. I need you to come talk about Jesus. I'd be there. But do you know what? The honest to goodness truth of the matter is, I'm probably never going to get to make those trips. I'm not, Jerry. I, I'm not going to get to make those trips. I'm not going to get to pack up where I'm at because somebody else needs to live. That's probably not going to happen. But I know this, that Jessica is going to have many an opportunity to convince a family member, to convince somebody else that, you know what? When they are going through an issue, when they are going through a problem, when they are going through a trouble, when they've got a sin that is packed heavy on their life and they don't know what to do, to say, you know what? If you could just get to Jesus, you're going to be made whole. That's kind of cool, isn't it, Sam? You can stop and think about it. Man, the ability that we have to convince other people. How many people have you ever tried to convince? in your life to tell them how you need to know Jesus. Most of us say that's the preacher's job, that's on the deacons, that's on the Sunday school teachers, and I want to go back to what I reiterate what I just said. I probably don't even get those opportunities. I would love to tell them, but I don't even get those opportunities. But somebody told that lady. You know what happened when they told that lady? You know what she did? I don't know how sick she, were, sick she was, Toby. I don't know what she was going through. I don't know if she was in a wheelchair. I don't know if she could walk. I don't know what she could do, but I do know this, that she got in her mind, she was so convinced that, man, if I could just get to Jesus Christ, I could just touch the hem of that garment. Matt, it wasn't a prayer. It wasn't the hand. It wasn't the, the put Jesus. If I could just touch it. You know what's really cool? The Bible tells us that when she did that, Jesus knew she did it. <laughs> did y'all get that? Listen to that. Jesus 
piling his way through a crowd. Lady comes up, knowing that all confidence that she's got. I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all, re- Anybody that's in this room that's going through something, I don't care what you're going through. Listen to this. I don't care what you're in. I don't care if you're in a health problem. I don't care if you're in a financial problem. I don't care if you're in a spiritual problem. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of problems that are in this room today. There are a lot of problems. But listen to y'all. First of all, I want to say, number one, I am convinced, okay? I'm convinced, Vicki. They don't have to tell. Y'all can sit here and say, Joey, God can't. God won't. God, you know what? God's forgot. I'm going to tell you something. I am convinced God will. God still does. Hey, listen, we're baptizing a young man today. You know why? Because God still saves. You understand that? Do y'all get that, Christian? I am convinced that God can do it. But here's the best part, is when I get to him, he knows that I'm there. I'm going to tell you something we don't do in this church. I fuss about a lot, and I'm going to keep fussing about it, Sammy. We ought to wear this thing out behind me. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's the hem of his garment, surely. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. An altar is a special place when you get down on your knees. And you grab a hold of something down there. You know what it says to the Almighty, to the all. Hey, you know what it says to the Almighty Maker? When you get down on your knees and you drop your head and, you, and, and Beverly, you've got, a, you've got a financial problem that you can't work through. And, and God, you've got a physical problem that you can't work through. And, and Brother Toby, you've got a psychological, you can't work through this thing. And you know what? And you drop your head and you humble yourself and you get down on your knees and you say, God, God, I need you to work in this situation. I just need to touch something. God said, that altar belongs to me. Hey, listen, y'all. This altar don't belong to Concord. Hey, it don't. It don't belong to the Baptist Mission Board. It don't belong to anybody that's in this community. This altar belongs to the Almighty God. And I believe, listen, <laughs> Dick, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Where you at, Brother Daryl? You care if I tell it? Daryl had last week, he had something going on. We were down here last week and Y'all don't know it, but uh, Daryl said, you know what? Daryl said, hey, you know, we were talking, and Liam was going through something, some things. He was at Scottish Rite. Most people in the church probably don't even know it, and that's fine. Some of us were communicating with him. I just had to be here one night when I was communicating with him. You know what, Brother Wiggs, you know what I did? I said, when I got off the phone, I said, dude, listen, I'm still at the church. I'm still at the church. I'm going to go down there and grab the hem of his garment before I get out of here. I'm going to go to God's altar. You know why? Toby, do you know why? Do you know why I did? Because I'm convinced that when I go to the Almighty and I go before him, and listen to me, there are a lot of people that sit in this room that you sit here and you went to sleep. (laughs) You sit here and relax. You sit here and wait for that clock to ring 12 so you can get out of here. But I'm going to tell you something. When you meet the Almighty one day, you're going to miss out that you could have grabbed a hold of the hem of the garment too. And they're going to leave. They're going to talk about what they went through. And leave. They're going to complain to God. You know, when I was on earth, I was going through this. And he's like, you know what? If you just got down there at that altar sometime, if you just grabbed a hold of it for just a second, I'm going to tell you something. Listen, not only have you been grabbing a hold of a part of me, but I'd have known it. That's pretty cool, isn't it, Matt? <laughs> but that's okay. Most of y'all pack up and go home. Y'all be good with that, too. It's probably better Lawrence anyway because, see, then you got your Christian friends. People can call and complain about how God doesn't do anything for them. See, listen, y'all, I don't want to call and complain about what God doesn't do for me. You know what I want to do, Brother Jerry? I want to call and tell people what God is doing for me. <laughs> listen, hey, listen, Tommy, I want to call and convince people that, you know what, I'm not, hey, listen, I'm not serving a God that's a pipe dream. I'm not serving a God that isn't real. Hey, I'm not serving a God that's dead. I'm serving the Almighty that, as I sang this morning, He lives. And I'm convinced. Hey, listen, and I laugh. Y'all may not be, but I'm convinced. I'm convinced that He can do all that He wants to do. I think we miss out on some stuff because we don't ask, but I'm convinced of it. You know, and once that lady got convinced of it, the Bible tells us, she got to Jesus, she touched him, and she became whole. That's amazing, isn't it? Jesus was like, who touched me? Disciples <laughs> like, man, there's all kinds of people around you. What do you mean you who touched you? 
Oh, somebody touched me. Randy, that's what I want to do. And I'm going to kind of close with this. When I get to that altar and I grab a hold of something, I want Jesus' attention to all of a sudden change. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Somebody's got a different kind of faith down there. Somebody's just not trying to get out of the bill. Somebody's just not trying to get out of doing something. Somebody's trying. Somebody's looking to me, listen, for who I am. Because I am convinced of who he is. Mike, I'm convinced that he is the Savior. The only way, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, the only way that we are going to be able to get to people to see Jesus Christ for who he is, Randy. The only way is we are going to have to see Christ for who he is as Savior. It'll never work. It'll never work. It'll never work as long as we just sit here. <laughs> and you just listen to one more message and just get up and pack up and go out of these doors and just do it one more time. When we are convinced that he is who he is, I'm going to tell you something, Toby. We're going to start convincing others. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we're so grateful. We're so thankful for all the many wonderful things that you've done for us. God, I'm, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm convinced that there's people here today that need you. Now, I don't know that they're going to come to the altar. I don't know that they're going to come look to you. I don't even know that they're going to do anything. But, Lord, I'll be honest with you. I wish with all my heart that they would. God, I, I, I believe that there's probably some here, this, people this morning that need your touch. Lord, that need, that need you to touch their lives. And they're, God, they're going through something. And God, Lord, I, I believe with all my heart that there's some people in this room today, dear Jesus, dear God, Lord, that, that, that probably if they were honest with themselves, they're not convinced. And they live a life that shows exactly just that. God, I pray this morning to God, Lord, no matter what we do and everything that we do, dear God, Lord, before we can convince anybody else of who the Almighty is, Lord, maybe we should just start with ourselves. Lord, our faith needs to be increased. Lord, knowledge. Dear God, Lord, I just pray that you'd be with this church this morning. Dear God, Lord, touch lives as only you know how. Lord, and if there is one here today that, Lord, that doesn't know you as Almighty Savior, so I pray today that it would be their day of salvation. Be with us now, Lord. Lead us, guys, and direct us as only you can. And it's in your sweet and holy name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. I want to take this time and thank you for watching and worshiping with us today. My name is Joey Dibman. I'm with Concord Missionary Baptist Church. If you are not a follower of Jesus Christ and have never asked him to come into your heart, I'd like to take a few moments to help you do just that. You know, the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, this is open to every one of us that requests because Romans 10, 13 goes on to say even deeper, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So today, if you would like to pray with me, let's bow our heads and pray to our Lord and Savior and ask him if you're seeking him to come into your heart today. Lord, I just want to take the opportunity that if there's someone out there today, and dear God, Lord, they're seeking you, dear God, Lord, and maybe they're at a place in their life where they can't see but today, through the Holy Spirit, which has pricked their heart, through your word, not the words that I preach, but through the holy word of an awesome father. God, I pray today, dear God, Lord, that they would be enlightened. And God, I, I'd ask them today to pray with me and say, Lord, I want to be a believer. Dear God, Lord, I want to believe in the fact that I know that you walked on this earth. Lord, I want to know that you died for my sins. God, I want to believe in the fact that on the third day you resurrected from a tomb and you sit on the right hand of God. And today, Lord, I want to ask you to come into my heart. Lord, if there's one out there praying with us today, dear God, Lord, that's seeking you, Lord, I pray that they would say this prayer with me today, dear God, Lord, and invite Jesus Christ into their heart to forgive their sins. Lord, we thank you for your blessings upon us. God, we thank you for what you're doing for us. I just pray that you'd be with us to this moment in time. And dear God, Lord, and show us the things that you'd have us to see. In Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen. You know, if you've done that today,
if you've taken the opportunity to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. You know, he died on a cross close to 2,000 years ago, and he walked on the earth. The Bible teaches us that everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord and believes in their heart that he has risen from the grave shall be saved. So if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, now I want to invite you to, you know what, into your new relationship with your Father. And I want to, to maybe help you, maybe through watching the videos as you learn and you grow, but maybe try to find a, a church that's close to you, a church home where you can go with other believers and walk with them and learn to grow with them. I invite you today also that maybe if today you've asked Christ to come into your heart, that, that you know what, maybe you would let us know. And drop us a postcard to say, you know, hey, I listen to these videos on YouTube. I appreciate what you've done. But I would like for y'all to know that on this date, on so-and-so, that I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. We'd invite you, and, and if you look at the address that's on the screen today, and, and maybe send a postcard. And then, you know what, if you don't want to write it down, maybe through email. There will be a, an email address that you can address to our church at Concord Missionary Baptist Church. You could just email us and let us know what's going on in your life. But even better than that out there today, maybe you are a, a Christian today and maybe you're not here in Temple, Georgia with us, but you're in your walk with Jesus today and you're, you're having some valleys that you're having to go through. And, and maybe you need some, to seek some prayer requests and some other shelters to lean on. I invite you to also to email us or drop us a card. We meet on Wednesday nights to pray. We take these things before the Father. We take these things very seriously and we come together as a group as we pray to our Father. So. I'd invite you to, to send those prayer requests to us, and I promise you that we'll take them and put them on the altar and bring them before the Lord. Once again, I want to thank so much for you taking your time to come spend with us and worship with us, you know, through song, through word, but more, more than anything else, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God bless you and your family.